Example six, what is the value of x? Now, this time, notice x is outside instead of inside, and it might, just untrained eye, you might say, well, that's the same difficulty that last one was. This is a tangent with a secant, so our, our rule for tangents is we square the tangent, right? So 12 is the tangent length. So we're going to do 12 squared on the left. And then the, set, the secant part, we're going to do the outside part, which is x times the entire thing, which is going to be x plus 7, right? We're going to add up this and this, x plus 7. So, outside piece times entire piece. And because x is outside, and now it's involved in both parts of that product, when I multiply that out, notice I get 144 equals x squared plus 7x. End up with a quadratic equation. Okay, so that is a possibility in these problems, since we are multiplying things. We end up multiplying x as we're going to get x squared out of the picture. <coughs> when that does happen, um, a quadratic equation equals zero is your key on solving a quadratic. So x squared, I like x squared positive, so I'm going to keep x squared and 7x on the right hand side. I'm going to move to 144 over to the right. That gets me zero equals x squared plus 7x minus 144. To solve a quadratic equation by factoring, which is what we should try to do first, uh, we look for factors of negative 144. We want those factors to add up to positive 7. To get the entire list, we want factors of negative 144. We want the sum of those factors to be positive 7. So these two numbers here are what go on this chart. Now, to create a negative product, I'm multiplying a negative times a positive. Okay. In order to get a positive sum, I want the positive number bigger. So if I do negative 1 times 144, I'm going to list everything, even the ridiculous ones. I know for a fact that's not the right answer. I don't even care about the 7 right now. I just want to make sure I'm getting the right sign. So can everybody see that if I take negative 1 times positive 144, I get positive something? All right. Okay. So to get the entire list, I just go down, go straight down the numbers. Go with 2, go with 3, go with 4, go with 5, go with 6, and so on. Divide into 144, write the factored form of it out. So um, negative 2 times 72, negative 3 times 48, negative 4 times, say that'll be 36. Negative 5 doesn't go into it evenly, right? So we skip that. Uh, negative 6 times 24, 7 doesn't go into it, 8, one, yeah, 8 does. Negative 8 times 18, 9, so be negative 9 times 16, uh, 10 doesn't, 11 doesn't, 12 times 12, negative 12 times 12. There you go. Once the number on the right is either smaller than or the same as the one on the left, you've got every number possible. Okay, so just try one, try two, try three, try four, try five, and so on. If it works, write it down the pair. If it doesn't work, skip it. And once the number on the right is either smaller than this number or the same as this number, that's the entire list. Okay. If I add them up, and I'm adding algebraically, so different signs subtract, bigger number, positive, positive. So this would be positive 143. This is positive 70. This is positive 45. This is positive 32. This is positive 18, positive 10, positive 7, positive 0, or negative 0. Take your pick. We want positive 7, we got positive 7 here, that's the right pair of factors. The shortcut to doing that is you look at it and say, I think negative 9 and 16 work, and it does. Okay. If, if you happen to notice the pair of factors right off the bat, you don't feel like you have to do the chart. If you can't find the pair of factors right off the, chart, off the, bat, no, off the um, bat, then the chart will find the factors for you. Right. So, Use the chart if necessary, but again, if, if as soon as you saw, hey, I bet you negative 9 and 16 is the right pair, yeah, hey, it is, and then don't feel like you have to do the whole chart if you already figured out the pair of numbers. All right. <clears throat> Zero equals, so I've got x minus 9 times x plus 16. I'm using red all day. I'm going to change colors up on you. All right, so... Once you get factored form equal to zero, the reason we want factored form is we have a product. Okay, and the way zero works in products is if you multiply by zero, you get zero. Doesn't matter what that other number is, right? So we change to a product equal to zero, and we can separate it into either product factor one equals zero, 
or we could say factor 2 equals 0. Again, I don't care what that blue underlined thing is. If the purple underlined thing equals 0, I'm multiplying 0 times something, I'm going to get 0 out. I don't care what the purple underlined thing is. If that blue underlined thing equals 0, I'm going to multiply 0 times something, I'll get 0. All right, so you have the ability with factored form to separate it into two simple equations. <clears throat> if I solve this one, I'm going to get plus 9, x equals 9. If I solve this one, minus 16, I'm going to get x equals negative 16. Those are my answers for x. x can either equal positive 9 or negative 16. Do both those answers seem reasonable for the problem that we've got here? We're trying to find the length from A to D on this picture. Which, which answer doesn't seem reasonable length? Negative 16. Because? It's negative. Negative. Lengths are positive, right? So the fact that we have two, po two answers here, if, if they're both positive, fine. Okay, but negative answers are no good. Negative answers that create negative measures. All right? If this said x plus 94 and x equal negative 16, negative 16 plus 94 is 78. That's positive. That's fine. Okay? So negative answers don't immediately say, no, they're no good. What does x represent? If it's representing a length, it should be positive. So negative 16 is no good. Only 9 is the right answer. So x equals 9 will be the correct answer to that.